Hello everyone, welcome again to today's presentation. Today we are going to look at creating red cap form using the dictionary. This presentation will be subdivided into two parts, part one and part two. The main objectives for the presentation are introduction to red cap platform, highlight key concepts on red cap use, developing data collection form using the dictionary approach. For part two, we'll demonstrate how to enter data using the tool and then demonstrate how to retrieve data from REDCAP for statistical analysis. Let's first of all look at introduction to REDCAP. REDCAP is a secure web application for building and managing online surveys and databases. REDCAP was created in 2004 at Vanderbilt University. While REDCAP can be used to collect virtually any type of data in any environment, it is specifically geared to support online and offline data capture for research studies and operations. To learn more about REDCAP, you can go to the URL HTTPS project redcap.org about key features of redcap form development you can build online surveys and databases quickly and securely on your browser this enables you to create and design your project using secure login from any device no extra software is required and access from anywhere at any time is guaranteed it is fast and flexible you go to form project creation to starting data collection in less than one day Customization and changes are possible at any time, even after data collection has already begun. Advanced instrument design features are available using REDCAP, and these ones include auto-validations, calculated fields, files uploading, branching, skip logic, and survey stop actions. We have diverse and flexible survey distribution options, and this includes the use of a list of email addresses or phone numbers for your survey respondents and automatically contact them with personalized messages and track who has responded or create a simple link for anonymous surveys for mass emailing to post on a website or print on a flyer. Data quality is guaranteed through the use of field validation, branching, skip logic, and missing data codes to improve and protect data quality during data entry, open data queries to automatically identify and resolve discrepancies and other issues on real time. Additional features include custom reporting. You can create custom searches for generating reports to view aggregate data, identify trends with built-in basic statistics and charts. You can as well export data to common analysis packages and this will enable you to export your data as PDF or CSV data for easy analysis in SARS, Stata, R, SPSS or Microsoft Excel. It's possible to secure file storage and sharing and upload and share any type of file with anyone in the world through the file repository feature or send it tool. Also works with exports and other built-in file uploading features. RedCap is able to offer database triggers and alerts. You can send real-time alerts and notification to your team or other stakeholders via email, text or phone based on certain data being entered or specific questions having particular answers. You can be able to connect to other resources using built-in features like the API to move data to or from your project. Build your own custom software development features to connect your project to other systems. Now to start off making the RedCap form, you need to first create a new project. And once you create a new project, you need to define its title, the purpose, and also provide the project notes. However, this is optional, but it is necessary information. So as mentioned earlier, REDCAP offers a fast and flexible way to create forms and projects. As mentioned earlier, that you can be able to make this in a day and start data collection within the same time frame. Now, several key features I would wish to bring to your attention, and one of them is the designer face, you can use this to create a form simply using the web designer. However, I'll take you through developing a red cap form using the dictionary. And after that, you can be able to download um, the code book from the form that you have already developed. Again, I will take you through checking how many data that have been entered using the record status dashboard, as well as using the add edit records to enter or view existing data records. 
Again, it's important for you to note that there are other features that are available using RedCap, and these include the project dashboards, alerts and notifications, multi-language management. You can also have a scheduling calendar and also use the data exports and reports to view the statistics and basic uh, histograms from RedCap. Again, you can also import data using a tool into RedCap. However, we're not going to all these details. We will only focus on creating a form. So once you have created your project, then automatically a blank form will be created and you can have several options to manage this form. One would be you can rename the form to a suitable name that fits your project. You can as well copy and replicate the form. If you have several forms that you have generated, then you can delete or download. Again, you can add additional forms for your project by creating a new instrument from scratch. Again, you can use import to add a new instrument from the official RedCap instrument library. So RedCap has a library where templates for various forms are stored and this could be a good way to start with. Now notice that there are advanced instrument design features and this includes the auto validation, calculated fields, file uploading, branching, skip logic and survey stop actions and all these are inbuilt in the RedCap platform. Please note that you can develop these forms into two main ways. One of them is using the form designer or using the data dictionary template. The procedure of creating a form includes you need to download the template and fill in the variables for each section and there are four main aspects of data options. This includes the radio option which offers a single select responses and also we have the check boxes which allows multiple select responses. RedCap allows you to provide in notes which do not require the respondent to provide any response as well as it provides text options which you can have a variety of variables that includes dates and free text entries. Once you have been able to create all your questions and you are satisfied that all the fields are properly documented, then the next thing would be to upload the dictionary into a CSV format into your project. And once you have been able to do that, then you can proceed on to fill in your responses. So let me take you through the form template dictionary as downloaded from RedCap. There are several features that will be captured on this dictionary and all these features are labeled using the column names as well as the row names. So the columns headers will include the fields that will be expected to guide the RedCap platform on how to handle the items. So we have the first column labeled as the variable or field name. This will include the variable names for your form. So the variable names should not have any capital letters and you should not start the variable names with a number. You can join two or more words to form a variable name. However, you need to connect this with an underscore. Then the next field is the form name and this is what identifies the form that you're currently using. Like for instance, in our case here, we have form underscore one being our first form that we are using. However, these form names can be varied depending on the number of forms that you anticipated to generate in your project. So you could have different names for different forms within the same project. Then the next variable head is a section header. So if you have your form categorized in different sections, then you can specify here the name of the section and the questions that fall under that section. All you need to do is put a name under the section header and RedCap will know that that is a section under those questions. So in our case here we could have two sections and the first one would be the demographic information and then the second section would be the fruits section. So the next field is the field type. So as mentioned earlier we have four different uh, field types and for a demonstration here I have put in three main ones. So we have the text which allows you to have a variety of entries including integers, dates and free text. We also have the radio field type. This allows you to only enter single select options and then we have the checkbox which allows the respondent to fill in 
multiple responses in one response then the next one is the field label and this is what the respondent will be able to read as the question to be responded to so the first one here as you can see is the record id we have hospital visit date age in years so this information or whatever you type in here is what the respondent will be able to read and respond to the next one is the choices calculations or slide the labels so this specifies the responses and the options that the respondent needs to fill into your question so like i mentioned earlier we have a question here on education status and the respondent is expected to choose one response and the responses are the first one is no formal schooling the second one is primary school the third one is secondary school and the fourth is other um, education status and they would be expected to specify so these are the available options that the respondent should be able to pick from then the next one is the field note and these are additional information towards the questions and we will expect the this information to guide the respondent on how the questions needs to be entered so in a situation where they need to choose only one response you can give in field notes to guide the respondent that they are expected to fill only one response in a situation where they need to fill in more than than one response then you can guide the respondent to choose all that apply in that particular question in a situation where there is only one free text um, response that is expected from the respondent then you can guide the respondent and tell them that for that particular question only one uh, free text is expected and in case they need to have additional information then they can separate that with commas the next column head is the text validation or show slider number so in this case you inform red cap on how the response will be regarded so for the question on the visit date we instructed the respondent that we expect them to fill day followed by month and then followed by year however we need also to guide red cap on how this information will be stored and how red cap would expect this information to be filled so we specify that we need a date function and then the arrangement of the figures would be day month and year for a situation where we expect respondent to put in whole numbers for the age for instance then we can guide red cap that the respondent will fill in a whole number in this case an integer and if the respondent fills in anything else a number with a decimal or a text then red cap will not accept that response so for questions that do not require any specifications for the text validations then you can leave the fields free or blank next is the text validation option and here you we start with the minimum allowable value so in a situation where we have age this is our third row third row so we expect the respondent to be 18 years and above so the minimum value for age would be 18 and then the maximum value for age would be 150 now the next column specifies the questions that would be regarded as identifiers and red cap would help us filter these ones during data extraction and submission to the analysis team so if you want to hide names then you can specify the that names are identifiers in this column and during data downloading these fields can be omitted while submitting the de-identified data to statisticians or external faculties then the next option is the branching logic step and this is where you guide red cap to show questions that are relevant to particular questions earlier answered so this allows the respondent to only answer questions that are relevant to the questions that are related so if we have men or gender being specified in an earlier question then we do not expect men to be pregnant so you can introduce use a skip button to only show questions that are relevant to male or female respondents accordingly so the next section is the required field so this guides 
the red cap to put in restrictions to questions that are mandatory and needs to have responses on red cap so you put in a y to signify yes that that question is required and if the question is not required then you just leave the space blank so the next set of columns are not compulsory for you to fill to finalize your form development however for advanced form settings then you need to categorically fill this appropriately we will not look into that but we'll schedule another training based on these fields in our next presentation now in summary the field type has various formats i mentioned earlier four different formats and in this case i have given an illustration on three of these formats and one of them is a text the radio button for single select responses checkbox for multiple select responses let us look at one of the question that is the education status that requires the respondent to fill in a single select option so we will specify the field type as radio and then go ahead to provide the choices as no formal schooling primary school secondary school and other specify so we expect the respondent to choose one response and as mentioned earlier the branching logic for the following question we will expect them to specify their education status by restricting the availability of this question only to a situation where question 3a um the answer is 4 next is the question on fruits we ask the respondent to list down all the types of fruits that are consumed and we provided three responses that is pineapple watermelon and oranges however we know that the respondent might be consuming other different types of fruits so to allow this respondent have a, an option to include any additional fruits then we can create an additional question which is other fruits that they consume and this question will only be relevant if this respondent chooses other fruits which is option number four and the response is one so this is the only time when this question will suffice otherwise if the respondent does not choose option number four then the question for them to list down additional fruits will not suffice next once you are done filling all the forms and writing down all your questions and their responses the next thing is to upload the modified dictionary into your project so you'll be expected to choose the file from your saved folder and then upload it um, using the this tab as shown so once you upload it red cap will review and identify any errors contained in your dictionary and then it will point out them those errors to you and you'll be expected to resolve them so like in our case here we have a field validation type is required in order to have a minimum or a maximum validation value the following cells are missing a validation type so you go back to this cell on your excel dictionary and then in include the file validation type and as I mentioned earlier it could either be an integer or a date and then once you correct that then you re-upload the dictionary afresh using the upload button then another error that has been flagged is the presence of a capital letter in the variable definition so in such a case red cap can comfortably change that into all small letters or you can go straight into that cell and change the capital letter into a small letter and then save your dictionary so once the form has uploaded red cap checks for errors and if found they are spotted and a change is necessitated once you have corrected all the errors then you need to upload the dictionary into red cap or into your project and and then if there are no errors then red cap will give you feedback and you'll be informed that your document was uploaded successfully and awaits for your confirmation so once the form has been uploaded successfully click on the commit to effect the changes that you have made on your dictionary so once you have committed the changes you will receive the confirmation that the form has been successfully submitted and is ready for data collection so to enter data you will need to click on the add or edit records button and then followed by add new record to be able to open the form so this is an example of a form and I can 
show you briefly how the various questions have been outlined so we have the question name here and then we have a trigger here informing the respondent that they must provide a value for this question and as you can see most of our responses are required fields and then you have the space to enter the information you have the field notes guiding the respondent on how the date should be entered so this one should start with a day then followed by month then followed Followed by the year and they can simply use the today button to click and select the date however they can also use the calendar option to select the date of that particular hospital visit so we have the client's first name we have the space provided for the same and also the field notes in the guiding the respondent on how to fill in the information so this tells the respondent that they need to indicate their first or baptismal name we've been able to give an example of the name that is expected so once you have been able to enter information then the next thing is to save the form as unverified after entering all the data awaiting data verification so there are several ways in which you can save the form so one of them would be to save the form as and verified as mentioned in the notes however if there are additional information that are missing in the form at the point of data entry then you can save the form as incomplete and then once the information has been furnished into the form then you can change the status of the form to unverified and then later once the second person comes and verifies that the accuracy of the information then that can be changed into complete status then finally save the form and exit and you still have options to save the form and open a new platform and this would ensure that you have good use of your time now in our next presentation we'll demonstrate how to enter data using the real red cup form or again we can demonstrate how to retrieve data for analysis demonstrate how to push the project into production and so on so for demonstration purposes let's open our red cup platform so the first thing that you'll be expected to do is list down your your username and password then once you log you'll be able to see all your projects but as mentioned earlier for you to start off working on red, red cup you need to create a new project give the project a title call this uh, demonstration project and then you can select the purpose of the project let's call this uh, project the purpose of this project to be practice however you have other options you have operation support research quality improvement and all these will come in with additional features so if you select uh, research then you'll be expected to uh, specify the name of the pi email of the pi name of the pi cited in the publications and all these other details that you'll be expected to fill quality improvement doesn't have a lot of information that is expected from you however the same case applies for practice or just for fun so specify the project notes and you say this this project is meant for demonstration, demonstration purpose and then create the project so you'll receive a notification that your new red cup project has been created and is ready to be accessed so on your left hand side you have all these fields where you can use to navigate through your project my project shows all the projects that are listed under your name and then you have the project home project setup you can design the form using an online web designer or using the dictionary as shown earlier so in our case here i will only take you through a few of the items and once you have these items uh, created then you can always modify them or improve them as time goes so 
I will show you how to create the forms using the form dictionary. So you click on the form dictionary and then first notice that you have the possibility of creating the form using the online designer, which we will not use in this case. So you can create your form using creating new uh, instrument from scratch you can add an instrument using this tab again you can change the name of the form using this tab where you have several actions that you can choose from so you can rename and call this form demonstration form and in case you need to add additional form you can add an instrument provide the name of the instrument probably this is the graphic form then you create a new instrument was successfully created the page will be loaded to reflect this so you have two instruments one of them is demonstration form the other one is demographic form to create the contents of these forms using the data dictionary so you go to data dictionary and then you have the option to download the current data dictionary so you click on this tab and then a csv document is downloaded into your downloads folder and this has the two forms here you'll be expected to change the contents of the data dictionary using the formats that i explained to you earlier here you will be expected to change the contents of the dictionary using these concepts explained earlier once you have customized your dictionary then you will need to select the customized file using the choose file and then upload the file using this tab so once you've been able to do that red cup will check whether there are any errors and it will notify you where the errors are and you'll be expected to correct the errors and re-upload until the form is well documented now to fill in the records you click on the record step you click on the add edit records then you have a section here where you can add a new record and this one will show you the two forms so we have the demonstration form and we have the demographic form so you choose which form you want to enter so you can click on the first one which is the demonstration form and we have these options here so you can save the form as incomplete or as an verified and as well as complete if the form has been verified so notice that since our form has only one question which is the record id if we save this form as incomplete then red cup will assign there a red ribbon so once we have entered all the information and we want to save this form as incomplete we have several options under which we can save this form so we can save and stay within the same form we can save the form and go to the next form we can save the form and exit the record or we can save and go to the next record so in this case we want to save and go to the next form this means we will close the demonstration form and go to the demographic form so once that has been done it's also possible to select the form from the list of the records for id number two so we have the demographic form here so we can open it and this one also doesn't have any questions so we can save the form as unverified uh, just to demonstrate to you what comes ahead so we save the form and exit now looking at the forms that we have we have the demonstration form and we have the demographic form with a yellow radio button so this one should have been red should have saved the form and exit so you see now it has a red button so this means that for this record number two we have form we have the demonstration form with a red button this signifies that this is incomplete so notice that we have the legend for the status we have incomplete it's gray there is no data save we have incomplete with some data which is red we have unverified and we have complete so supposing we have someone verifying this information for the demographic form after we have initially entered they can come back to that form and then change these status to complete and once they save that form then the form status changes to green now that shows you how to create the form 
how to enter information in the form and how to save the form. So our next steps would be to demonstrate how to push the project into production. So once you have finished working on the project, then you move on to the project setup. Make sure that you have verified that everything has been entered correctly. You have piloted your form. If you have additional individuals to add into accessing your project, you can do that using the user rights. And then finally, we have move project into production action using this tab so once that has been done then you are ready to go so you click on this tab and then you will be in a position to push your project into production so having taken you through that process that leads us to the end of our today's presentation i wish to thank all of you for listening and looking forward to seeing you in our next presentation thank you